Hi everyone, my name is Andy Evenson and this video is going to cover the different types of washes and when you're going to be required to use them in, your, in uh, the painting process. Basically there's three main types of washes. There's wet on wet, which is kind of how I start my paintings. The paper is wet, my puddles are wet, light washes, that's what I'm kind of putting in my sky typically. Um, and then there's wet on dry. That's kind of that second stage of the painting. And for those of you who have studied with me before, and you see me do the value studies, that connected middle value shape, that's wet on dry. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And we'll practice that together in a minute here. Um, so there's wet on wet, wet on dry, where my puddles are wet and my paper is dry. So now I'm defining objects. So I don't want my paper wet. I want my paper dry so that that shape stays you know, descriptive, the silhouette or the edge of that shape. Um, stays nice and sharp, but what happens inside that big connected shape, I want to be very fluid and colorful and let maybe some colors mix and merge together so my puddles and my, my paints are fairly wet still at that stage. And then the third kind, the last kind, is dry brush or dry on dry where my paper is dry and I'm using a smaller synthetic brush with very little water in my paint mixture. It's almost just paint and that's what I'm using to show maybe little winter trees kind of brushing in the foliage or some texture on the ground plane. Um, and, and it also is very helpful for um, kind of indicating motion and movement and figures and I'll show you what I'm talking about there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to um, everything here so you can see. This is an example of a scene that um, would require all three types of uh, washes. Uh, most scenes do, actually. But my sky, if I was going to paint this, I would wet my paper and put in all those nice, big, beautiful colors in the sky. I don't want my clouds to be too hard edged. There's a little bit of softness on the edge of those clouds. So I would need to drop that in while everything is wet, OK? Um, then that um, wet on dry kind of aspect would be the connecting of some of these little shapes. Uh, along the ground plane here and the shadows and the rooftops and simplifying those. And then you've got these little trees, winter trees, and maybe some texture of dirt in the field, like I said, where I could use some dry brush. Reflections in water, that's another instance where a lot of times you're gonna want to have some nice softness, okay? So there's a difference between the reflections that you're seeing underneath down here, how soft they are in the water. You don't want those too defined. And the land itself, okay? So my first wash would be dropping in the sky, all these light colors down in here, the, the reflection of the sky down here in the water. And then I would be, before that has a chance to dry, I'm gonna come in with some thicker paint and probably put in the reflections so that they softly merge a little bit into that water shape. Okay, then I'm going to let it dry. Then I would paint the land itself on drier paper so that the top of that isn't looking all fuzzy like the, like the reflection looks underneath. Okay, so wet on wet, that paint into that wet wash, wet on dry, waiting for my paper to dry. And then dry brush would be the little twigs and leaves and maybe some of that, again, some little texture on some of these trees. Okay. Dry brush is also a great way to show sparkle on the water, all right? So in this instance, instead of having soft, fuzzy reflections, um, I would paint, I would leave this almost white paper down here, and I would mix this watercolor, this turquoisey color, and thick enough paint so that when I dry brush into that and I break it up, I'm going to be able to show that little sparkle on here, okay? I've been teaching watercolor to beginners and advanced students alike and have seen them go on to really grow and some of them have entered and gotten into big shows and won awards themselves. Um, that's really gratifying for me. So I know what I teach is very helpful. Uh, so with that being said, I invite you to stay tuned and sign up to my watercolor marathon using the, uh, the link in the video description. Um, in the watercolor marathon, I'm going to talk about all sorts of things from basic to advanced techniques how to tackle trees, sky, water, um, lots of different aspects of the landscape, and it'll be very helpful for you. So I'm going to just demonstrate a couple of these things for you as I talk about it, and we're going to do more of this in a bit as well. But again, if I have this little bit of, I need to zoom out more here, sorry. Okay, so if I have these little figures sitting here along the, the water's edge, like so, a couple of people sitting here, and I want that nice little sparkle of water behind them. I'm gonna use a brush that doesn't hold a lot of water, 
probably use a little bit thicker paint. Mix a nice turquoisey green for that water. Okay, so my paint is pretty thick and I can brush that. I'm gonna start over here where the water is more solid and then as I get closer to the figures, I'll just lift my brush up and off of the paper to create that little bit of a sparkle in the water, okay? So that's a nice, quick, effective way to, to show that. That's dry brush. Going back to this one, if I wanted to show those softer reflections in the water, I'd be painting my blue sky. Here, I'll just draw the little strip of land here for you real quick. There's little buildings down here where the boats are moored. Here's my mountain in the background. Okay, so I've got the shapes that I need here. All right, so I'm going to be painting the shape of that water. I'm going to leave a little bit of that bright gold down there if I can. And the reflection of those little buildings too. So I would paint that nice deep blue sky like so in the water. And then before that has a chance to dry, probably come in with a little smaller brush here, some thicker paint. And like I said, get that little nice little orangey reflection down here first. But you can see what happens on there. It's just fuzzing right down into that water, okay? I can come up on the shore a little bit, but I wouldn't want to get too close to that sky. Going even a little bit thicker, darker with that reflection color. So I can get some nice reflection of that mountainside now by dropping it into that sky color in the water. And it'll fuzz just a little bit and make it look nice and soft on the edges. I'll zoom in there so I can see what I'm talking about. But the key to this is, and this is important, okay? My first wash, the, the blue of the sky had a lot of water in it. When you look at my palette here, it was very runny. I'm coming in to drop in some of these colors, that reflection. I used a different, smaller brush and thicker paint with less water, okay? I'm using the water that's on my paper here from that blue wash to fuzz everything. If I came into that with something like this, with as much water as I used to mix my sky, and tried to drop that in here, that's when you get blooms, okay? Because that wa it's gonna be spreading out into that blue area, and as, as that goes, it's gonna collect that paint and end up with a nasty looking hard edge and a bloom. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's that's something that's very common that students um, end up getting in their work because they're not controlling the amount of moisture on their brush. They get these weird blooms all over the place. As soon as you put paint and water on your paper, it's starting to get absorbed into it, okay? So if you're going to work into an area that hasn't totally dried yet, that's partially dry, you need to make sure that you don't have as much water on your brush. So then you can drop those colors in. They'll softly merge and fuzz, but they won't create um, this big bloom and spread out into everything. Okay? That's the, that's the key to that. All right. Another example here. So that was that dry brush to get the sparkle on the water. You can see that nasty bloom going in there from what I was just showing you. Here's another instance where you might need to use a lot of dry brush, okay, in a scene like this. We've got a lot of texture, right? This farmland, this might be a time where I would actually use almost rough paper, too, to add in, or to um, aid in that getting some of those textures. The barn wood is very rough, the brick. The, the field that the cows are standing on have, has a lot of texture and create that with dry brush. Those little um, wintry fall trees are all, you know, leafless trees. You can scrub those in with dry brush. So this would be an instance where I'd be using a lot of dry brush on, on, uh, with a small synthetic brush to get in that, some of those convincing textures. 
And that takes practice too, okay? I have my students probably, if you want to practice that a little bit with these trees, again, with a smaller brush. Don't use a nice natural hair brush. I'm gonna use a smaller brush that's more of a synthetic, cheaper brush, okay? And I wanna make sure I've got more paint and less water, okay? This isn't a, a, a puddle. I'm gonna to switch to my palette here for you. This isn't a, a nice big fluid puddle. I'm sticking that brush right into paint and I'm pushing it around, okay? Um, it's, it's not nearly as runny as I would use for some of those earlier washes. Just sticking it right in there. All right. So now you'll be able to see this. So I'm gonna do this dry brush here for these trees. I take that brush and I use the fat side of that brush and just kind of lift that up here. And scumble in some of those tree tops like so. Quick, easy, effective way to get winter trees light touch so basically you're, you're not pushing that hard you're just kind of pushing enough so that paint is sitting on the top of the bumps of that cold press or rough paper that you're using all right but that's a lot easier using the side of your brush with a little bit of a feathery touch like that than to use the tip of your brush and try and paint a thousand little twigs okay so doing that dry brush for all the foliage and then i come in and i'll use the tip of my brush to put in some of the branches in the tree trunk and connect it up to some of those little areas that I just painted. And again, that's a real quick, easy, effective way to make these dry brush, wintry trees. Okay, so it just takes practice, but you need a paper with a little bit of tooth on it, either cold press or rough, not hot press. And again, really kind of scumbling it on there and with a nice feathery touch using the fat side, not the tip, the side of it, just kind of brush it on there and you get really nice dry brush effect. Same thing would be for on the, on the ground plane, okay? I'd probably come in with an initial wash and tone that whole bottom area nice raw sienna. And then after that's dry, I would mix up this kind of darker gray brown of the dirt. And on top of all that down below there, I would do this kind of a thing. And that just helps to make it look like dirt that they're standing on, okay? That field. Nice, quick, dry brush strokes. But you've got to be kind of confident with this. Move fast. And, and again, be really wary of how much water you have on your brush. There's not a lot on there. It's mostly just paint. So those are, that's an effective use for dry brush. Another great use for dry brush is to make it look like things are moving, okay? I'm just going to demonstrate real quickly here. The, how to make a person look like they might be walking. The trick is to dry brush their legs a little bit and not make them make their, their bodies too perfect. So if I want to make a figure look like he's walking or her, okay, there's their head. Give them a dark gray shirt here. And if I kind of angle their body a little bit too, that also helps to make it look like they're walking. Maybe one arm is out and one arm is back behind their body a little bit. So that just that little bit of an angle to their torso helps. But now when I do their legs, I'm going to, I'm going to use much thicker paint like I did before. Okay, got that nice blue on here. And I'm going to touch their torso and I'm going to try and make one leg a little bit longer than the other and dry brush the other leg. And that little bit of that dry brush kind of makes it look like he's blurring a little bit and it helps to make it appear like that figure is walking instead of just standing still. So again, if you have, you know, dogs running or horses running or people walking, by dry brushing their legs like that, it kind of makes them look blurry. So dry brush is great for showing that sparkle on the water, for showing doing the winter trees, for showing dirt on the ground, and for motion, okay? So it's an effective tool. It just takes practice is all, a little bit of timing and paint consistency. Another um, type of, uh, and this is pretty similar to putting the reflections in, is when you have fog, okay? If you're gonna be painting a foggy scene like this, 
these distant trees that aren't that far away that are just melting into the fog. It would be the same thing as what I did for this reflection here, okay? I'd be painting that gray sky and before I came in and popped, you know, these darker, more defined trees in, I'm gonna let that sky just dry just a little bit and then same thing, I'm gonna come in with a blue-green, about that same consistency and drop those trees in so that they fuzz into that a little bit so that those distant trees look like they're you're seeing them through the fog. Okay, so it's that same thing where you've got to come in with a little thicker paint. I'm using the light wash on my sky to fuzz a little bit and just drop those in. Then I would let that dry a little bit more, paint these trees and the ground, let it dry a little bit more and paint these trees, and all the darks finally. Okay, so just kind of um, getting drier paint and more defined shapes coming forward. So fog is an effective way, or rainy days, whatever, um, to work a little bit more wet into wet to kind of practice getting that illusion of what you're seeing through there. Okay, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to sign up for our YouTube channel. We've helped all levels of artists learn the skills of drawing and painting, and you can follow that link via the video description uh, to register for my marathon. I hope to see you there.